Welcome to podcast number three on food, weight loss, and hypnosis for inner conflicts. We've all felt what it feels like to be conflicted on the inside. A part of us wants to eat that sugary dessert, but another part of us wants to lose weight, look good, and feel good. And as it can often happen, the fight goes back and forth between I want that dessert and I shouldn't have it until we finally just give in and stop the fight. We all have inner conflicts going on within us and they can be about anything. But today we will be talking to Didi Vergados about how she uses hypnosis to resolve these inner conflicts when it comes to food and weight loss and how resolving inner conflicts is one of the most powerful tools that can be used in hypnosis. Hello, Didi. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good. Well, I'm so happy to discuss this issue with you because it probably is one of the number one things that as hypnotherapists Mm -hmm. we deal with and that you are asked to deal with specifically. Absolutely. Well, could you explain to our audience how inner conflicts get formed around food? Um, Okay, great. I'm going to explain a little bit about the inner workings of our minds so that I can explain or pardon me, answer that question. So when we're young, we learn automatic behaviors. In fact, it's said that 95% of our behaviors are an unconscious. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you're getting in a car, if you take the same route every day, and then one day you need to turn the opposite way, but you find yourself automatically mm-hmm. turning the way you're used to. We are running on automatic most of the time. Once we learn something, we learn it well, and it just goes automatic. Well, it's the same thing with our emotions and our habits. So how inner conflicts get formed is, When we're a child, for example, and we fall down and our mom wants to give us a cookie along with her love, Mm -hmm. we pair love with the cookie. Mm -hmm. So later on, that child is in university, the child is lonely, the child hurts itself, pardon me, not a child anymore, the university student hurts themselves, they need that love, they reach for the cookies. Mm -hmm. So they reach for the cookies often because they feel lonely often and this becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. So when one wants to lose weight and then all of a sudden you're telling that part of them, no, you can't have cookies anymore. Guess what happens? That part of them throws a little temper tantrum, doesn't it? So if you ask that person what's compelling them or driving them to eat, they won't know. Mm -hmm. We actually have to go back through time and figure out when was this part created? then we have to work with the part. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example, um, a specific client example, a client that I had a couple weeks ago, he had grown up in a horrible, horrible, horrible household Mm -hmm. where I don't even think his fridge worked and let alone even if it did, there was never any food in it. Mm -hmm. They were very, very poor. Mm -hmm. He was locked in his bedroom every night so he couldn't even get out if he had to. He just had just, I think he had um, an alcoholic father, like everything that could happen to this man happened. Mm -hmm. And he said, and my mom every morning sat down with a coffee and a mocha mocha lava cake. That's what he called it. (laughs) And so when he finally got out of the home and he had his own fridge, he said, I had my own fridge. Mm. And he just said, I'm going to eat whatever I want when I want. So he continued from that time on with a sense of relief, eating lots of cakes and cookies Mm -hmm. because that's, you know, what he grew up with. That's what he learned. So then that habit becomes automatic. So the reason he was gaining weight into his older years is because he had continued that habit. And you know, as we get older, it just, it's not going to work for us anymore. Like when you're younger, you can eat cake three, four times a week. When you're older, start to put on the pounds. Yeah. So it, it's in simply going back and finding out where that conflict, that part of him that was created happened. And then working with that part of him that he actually went for a couple of weeks with zero cravings at all, never touched sugar at all. Mm-hmm. It's just that easy. Once you address and resolve the inner conflict, the person literally doesn't even want to touch sugar. It's not, it's not even a part of their mind anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So would you say this was a type of regression that you used to access yes. that node, if you will, that behavioral node in yes. your client's subconscious mind? You actually brought them back to right. that childhood experience where food and love had become confused. Right. And with him in particular, it was a sense of relief of finally having food and then him, tell, t- him telling himself, oh, great. 
I can eat whatever I want, I'm gonna eat. And that sense of relief yeah. that yeah. went along with, I finally have food. So for everybody, it's different. For mm -hmm. some people, it's the food with the love. Um, I remember an Italian girl I had, it was just always the bread with the family. And yeah. you know, when she was away from home, she'd move to a different country, she would eat that bread to feel the love of the family. It's different for everybody. There's different parts of us that get created. Now, we all suffer from what I call conflicts, inner conflicts. And they're usually mild. It's like, yeah, I kind of want to have that sugar if, if weight loss isn't mm -hmm. an issue. Mm -hmm. Kind of want to have that, but I'm okay if I don't, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or I really, really want, a part of me really, really wants to go out tonight, but a part of me is so tired from the week that I'd rather stay at home. Oh, but I want to go out, but I want to go, not a big deal. Mm -hmm. When it becomes a big deal is when we become obsessed. Mm -hmm. And the fight in our mind goes back and forth and back and forth, and it makes us literally crazy mm -hmm. until we just like, I'm going to eat that damn cake <laughs> just to just to like stop this argument in my mind mm -hmm. so that's wow uh, well would you say that that some individuals who come to you for help are really dealing with an addiction sort of a process yes they are yeah. because as we we already have discovered sugary high carbohydrate um, refined foods with a lot of salt sugar and fat mm -hmm actually go to the nuclei, nucleus accumbens in our brain, which are the pleasure centers, mm -hmm. and they give us pleasure. So if you've created that habit where, like my dear aunt, mm -hmm. at three or four o'clock every day, she used to have her cup of tea mm -hmm. and she used to have her sweet. Mm -hmm. Again, you've not only created a habit where there's, that part of her had lived f with her for her entire yeah. life. She, yeah. There was no getting rid of it. And she lost a lot of weight. She was obese at one time and she lost weight. Um, so, <laughs> so it's funny when we would address it with her, she, she had treats hidden everywhere. She was a closet <laughs> eater. Like she, yeah. she was even trying to hide it from herself. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it, that is interesting that what, as you just said, that, that this, this response to sugar and these other really, uh, almost, you could almost call them toxic, uh, food sources become nucleotides and are affecting the pleasure centers of the brain. Right. So yeah. it's not only is that part of us want that because it just makes us feel good, but our brain also sets up the craving. Yes. yes. So, so there is the, there is the circle of behavior that is so common with addiction. Right. I see. So right. you really, some people, you really have to treat it as if you are dealing with an addiction, with a substance addiction. Yes, yes, in yes. A sense. But parts work, what we call parts work in hypnosis, has got to be the most powerful tool I believe that we have. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll have people come in and they'll have like a tick in their eye since they were, you know, seven years old. And sometimes in just one session when we, we talk to the part of them that created yeah. that tick because they were nervous when they were seven or whatever and we, we resolve that, it literally goes away. Yes. It's, it's, it's the, I think it's probably the most powerful tool that we can use in hypnosis, or one of them anyway. It certainly is, especially for repetitive behaviors, mm -hmm. whether they, you know, or negative repetitive behaviors, as in weight loss or addiction or any number of things. So when you, when you remove this relationship, this unhealthy relationship with the food, Dee, Dee either through parts therapy or any of your other many modalities, do you put something back in? You take yes. away the cravings and the addictive aspect, but then what do you put back in? That's an excellent question. What you take away, you must add something. So we add what's called choice points, mm -hmm. where they have a variety of healthy choices mm -hmm. that they could make instead. Mm -hmm. So we don't just give them one choice or the other, like instead of um, having your three o'clock suite, why don't you listen to some music or go for a walk? Because if they don't feel like listening to music or they don't feel like going for a walk, then they'll eat. Yeah. We have to give them many different options. Mm -hmm. So once you um, reprogram in the idea that there's many options of things you can do instead of that old habit, mm -hmm. the unconscious tends to carry those out. And the subconscious mind will select an appropriate behavior. Yes, they in, will. In, in because lieu you've of. already programmed that you've talked to the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. The subconscious mind completely understands. That's right. So all the all the person has to do is basically allow the process to happen. Allow the process, yeah. and and just remember that sometimes once in a while that old habit might crop mm -hmm. up. But to just consciously say, "Yeah, I don't need that anymore." Right. You know, and just 
turn their behavior to the new healthier choices. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use aversion? In other words, say there's a specific food, we talked about sweets a little bit, but it really mm -hmm. can come down to a specific food that is almost that is in itself a, a, having a narcotic-like effect on the person. Do you yes. ever use aversion to simply just sort of take that particular Make it food, really unpleasant. Make it horrible. Yeah. Make it so yeah. unpleasant that their desire is cut off at the knees. Right. Yeah, I love aversion. Yeah. <laughs> I never used to use it, but I became a big fan when oh. I started to. Yeah. Um, if it's just to one thing, and you have to ask the client, are you willing to not ever want chocolate again? Right. Right? right you have to make sure because it, it's more difficult to do for a group like a whole all carbohydrates no, you can't. But, but if it's yeah. just one thing like chocolate like I was on a TV program where we did it for a woman who was addicted not only to chocolate but the crappy kind like yeah. Kit Kat yeah so we, we I did some aversion work with her mm -hmm. um, yeah because Kit Kat like if you yeah. lose that is that gonna be a big deal not really no and she no. was so addicted to it that she would have it once or twice a day and, mm -hmm. it, and it wasn't wasn't a good addiction so um, when it's something that specific it's pretty easy to do a version right. Right. yeah it's very pretty good. easy and in general I know this is kind of a big question but mm -hmm. how is hypnosis uh, used as a tool to resolve conflicts in general, maybe not necessarily conflicts about food, conflicts about behavior, uh, do I become angry, do I not, do I react to this, do I not, how, how is hypnosis a powerful tool for simply, I guess, conflict resolution within the self? Okay, if it weren't for the regression in the hypnosis, we would never know why that part originally got formed. Yeah. Um, the, every time we have a behavior, there's something we're trying to do for ourselves that's positive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we need to find out the positive intention as to why that behavior was created. Mm -hmm. So that's an excellent question. Um, so we get the positive intention and then we have that part of them meet it in more healthy ways. I see. I right. See. And, and that's where we install the choice points and the different choices and things like that. So yeah, it is, it's important to use the hypnosis to get to the root cause. Yes. Because without the hypnosis, we would never know what the root cause is. And regression, as you know, is done through hypnosis. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. And I would imagine that, that there might be the odd occasion where even with regression techniques, it's not always clear the origin of a behavior. But the great thing about hypnosis is mm -hmm. if you don't know where that kernel begins, you can still effectively work with a client. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But normally when it comes to parts work, we are pretty yeah. much able to get in touch with it. Indeed. With In touch with it, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dee Dee. And uh, again, this was Dee Dee Vergado speaking uh, very specifically about uh, weight loss and health and wellness issues. Please visit us on our website at bloomhypnosis.com and we'll have right. more interesting info for you next week. Excellent, thank you. Thank you.